In this video, I'm exposing one of the main reasons that you might not be completing your backswing. In collaboration with Tyler McGee, we're gonna be showing you our favorite drill to ensure that you're able to get yourself in a backswing position to strike that ball clean. Let's get stuck in. All right, Ty, so let's talk about the trail shoulder movement in the golf swing. Now, we do see a lot of players, they obsess about, let's say, the angle of that club shaft, where the club face is. But a lot of that is actually influenced by the movement of that trail shoulder from, let's say, left arm parallel in the backswing. And then as it then gets back to that same stage in the downswing, and there's a certain term called stability, right? Around that trail shoulder. So what I want you to talk about is just like a common inconsistency that you see with the amateur golfer in regards to that sort of trail shoulder movement. Yeah, I'm, I think, you know, in the effort for most people to get to the top of the swing, they find ways to do it, right? So if it's the most natural way for them, but maybe not the most efficient, they might, I would say, overdo sort of how much elbow flexion they have just in the effort to get there. Sometimes this right shoulder might even over retract sort of like this look when they get to the top so it actually gets pulled yeah. behind them big old lawn yeah move so behind them like th that. that were you know obviously from like the radius standpoint it's going to be harder to get the club into a good spot for putting force into the grip it's going to be a little bit harder so i think it's really important that when you get halfway back if you can manage what that trail arm is doing and that trail shoulder to help you get i would say better rotation to the top or a better sense on how you get to the top even if it's not quite full you know mm. i think people you know, obviously, if we lengthen the swing, we have the chance for more distance. But if we're hitting it crooked, it's not ideal. So mm -hmm. some guys, like, think of a ROM, right? Like, you just won. Short swing, lots of power. I think some people would benefit from that kind of uh, yeah. idea, you know? Totally agree. And I think a lot of players, they're trying to get, let's say, their full backswing or complete their backswing in an inefficient manner through a lot of arm pull, right? And when this happens, we can see... A huge disassociation between what that trail arm is doing and let's say the reference of where my pec is and what we see with the best players in the world is they would tend to stay in somewhat of a connected state that doesn't mean that it's pinned to their body like this the whole time but if i'm standing up here and facing this camera in this direction and i just pivot my body back add 90 degrees of uh, arm flex there and then get down into my posture well that there is exactly what you're talking about we have a bit of a dynamic stretch when we are making our swing but if i then stand up and then face back forward we can see this arm really hasn't moved at all yeah and i i think a, an important piece of that is when you're demoing it like if this elbow if i go this way if this elbow starts going really behind sort of my back here then you're you're going to lose sort of that stretch in in this part of your body so if i can keep that arm in front like you demoed there which was great and then as i go these ribs are pulling back out of the way and that keeps me in a really nice arm position right so if you're not able to pull the ribs back it's like well how are you going to get to the top you're probably just going to do that so i would just say shorten it and get to the spot where you can get it in a really mm. solid position. And I would say if there's one commonality between all the great instructors that I've had the opportunity to work with over this, this journey of um, golf coaching throughout the world is that the overwhelming consistent theme that a lot of players and a lot of coaches are talking about is about keeping the arms and that torso turn in sync for as long as we can. Meaning that every professional golfer starts with their hands in front of their chest and at the moment of impact, they get them back in front of their chest. So the more that we keep them within reason in front of the chest and reduce how much of this arm pull, this separation, this lift that we have, the easier it is to get back to that functional impact position that you see with the best players. Yeah, and, and I think another way, like when they're demoing it, like you were showing, is if they get to here and they feel like, okay, I can't get much more through here, well, then maybe look to the hip to help them Correct. get a little bit more turn so there's lots of ways obviously to get to the top that mm. would just be okay i'm i'm maxed out well let's see if i you know maybe open my toe up and, and use my pelvis a little bit better uh, yeah. to help me load everything up in yeah. the backswing I, I would say it's it's all relative to a player's individual mobility if let's say they're a senior golfer and they don't have the same flexibility as maybe a younger junior well definitely little things like having that trail foot uh, flared open the right foot drop back a little bit that can help facilitate a little bit more hip turn which then as you can see then allows us to give us the freedom to get that greater rotation at the top here now 
then just talking specifically about a little drill pertaining to this trail yeah. arm here, I want you to kind of uh, give me something that you work with a lot of players in, in regards to the feeling or even like a little exercise to keep this in front, especially through that sort of latter stage of the backswing and transition, just so it's not falling and dropping and getting too deep behind. Yeah, like I, I really like the idea. It's really simple, but if you just take your trail hand and you take it to the top, and I say, keep your hand away from your ear. Okay, mm -hmm. so my hand's away from my ear. Can you reach your hand to that position? And then that's keeping that nice right arm structure. For most people, when they do reach, it's gonna really, they'll feel like, oh man, it's so far away from me, Yeah. right? But it's, it gives them a good sense, especially if it's someone here, right? Yeah. If they start, okay, I'm gonna move my hand from my head, and then can I get up to that hand? And that typically gets the arm in a really nice spot. You could also play around with hand position too. I like it, obviously, if the shoulder sits down, right? So it's not shrugged up as they do it. I don't want them really looking like this, right? So the space from my shoulder to my ear, is, is created and then I create nice nice width and then I try to reach that position. Yeah, I, I, I really love that, that, that sensation of keeping that as far away from my ear as possible. I've actually never seen or attempted that myself. And straight away when I do this, when I'm grabbing this left hand and putting it back on the club, I can feel like within reason, these hands are beautifully in front. And I love single-handed exercises right. and drills because it just gives players such a great awareness of little tiny movements that are also very important, like such as how to move the golf club effectively off the ball. Well, you've got to have a little bit of hinge, then you've got to pivot to support the weight of the club. Otherwise, this thing feels like it's 200 kilos coming yeah. back here, right? So supporting the weight of that club through a hinge and a pivot, and then just like you said there, feeling a distance away of those hands from my, from my head there. Now, any other closing thoughts before we nut one down there? You know, I, I, I would say, I like doing it in progressions, right? So say it's like, okay, we're working on this arm position. Maybe start with, okay, we'll do right hand only and we'll get it, say chest high or hip high, and then we grab it and then we pitch and then we sort of stretch it up to here and then we pause and then we pitch it off a tee and then we sort of work on adding speed to that. Cause obviously if it's a new movement, it's gonna take a little bit of trust and it, you're, you're, you know, sometimes the impact positions might change. So just give yourself a little bit of time and work through it. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do a little three ball progression then. So we'll start off here, just my single hand. I'm just gonna go about this high, you reckon? Perfect, yeah. Okay. Perfect. And then you could go like up an inch and then just turn through. Perfect. And just right. feeling the width on each of those uh, swings. And the, the thing is, like I love about that, I'm surprised I even hit that ball actually, from there is just it feels so wide. So maybe it's something in my swing that I probably need to do a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, and even if, so you could do exactly what you did and just to get a sense of where you are. So it's like here, and then even going, okay, there's impact. Can I get my hands back to that spot? Just so your brain can sort of picture like where the club's actually going to be moving. Sometimes it's hard to... Uh, to do it for the first time, right? For the it's so first, different. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seven o'clock in the morning, <laughs> yeah. not enough coffee. You're doing pretty good, man. All right, yeah. perfect. So that's that feeling there. Yeah. And we won't hit it from there. Let's put it together and that one down there. Awesome. Yeah, really nice, man. Love it. Good job. Yeah.